Welcome back to the podcast, take two. We buggered up the last one, so this is our <laughs> final copy. Final copy, bro. So we're going to carry on from our planning from 2024. Yep. And sort of how, when you've got your shit going good, Yep. how can we add to it? Yeah, it's just, depends on what your goals are too, bro. Yep. You know, I think, um, you know, someone like myself, my goal is to get the couch stretch going and I've initiated all implemented that habit before my walks in the morning you know we spoke about this briefly on tuesday now it's take two we can dive into it further you know i wake up i get my shoes on i go out the door i go straight into my garage i do two two to three minutes on each leg before i go for my 45 minute to an hour walk and that's a habit that i knew i needed to uh, implement into my daily program in order for me to hit my goal which is getting that back onto the wall for two to three minutes so if 75 hard, you've got your routine down, it's yeah. got it laid out for you. Yeah. So now you can play around within those exactly. time limits. Exactly. What you're so that January period was just, you know, getting the foundations, making sure everything's nice and basic, sort of fine-tuning my food, fine-tuning my prep, fine-tuning myself. And now it's sort of like dialing into, you know, what I really, really want from this. You know, and there was always the two things where I wanted to strip down that, you know, this weight. You know, I'm still um, about 15 to 20 kilos off. And then that couch stretch, which is a huge goal. I know that completing 75 hard, I'll, I'll lose that weight anyway. But the discipline and consistency is what I'm looking for. And, you know, if I can wake up every morning and walk, then what's something that I can implement that's closely tied to my goals uh, in before that? And that's the couch stretch. Instead of intensity first, we go consistency first, mm-hmm. volume first. Mm-hmm. And then you can tinker with everything yeah. with the intensity volumes. You can't go intensity first, then fall off. Yeah. As people sort of went hard in January and they've fallen off already in February. So, yeah, I like starting with the volume first. Same within our content that we try and make. Yep. I'd like to get that that done first and then I can play around with it. Yeah. So I don't think it works the other way. You can go hard and then you fall off and then you're like, ah. Yeah, you need that. You, like You just need that. I feel like when you do more, bro, you, you give yourself like a worse of a chance. Like if you overwhelm yourself with, with stuff like a program or training and you go and, you know, 75 heads hard is a perfect example, bro. So many people go hard straight out of the gate. And I understand that you do want to like feel that, but you know, you, you're setting yourself up a little bit more for failure, which happens around that midpoint of, of a, a you know, 75 hard program. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. And you know, if you can just, really focus on building that foundation first. It always makes it easier when you get to that middle period when you can start tinkering with stuff. Yeah, if you're not a runner or a um, endurance yeah, athlete, perfect then example, your bro. first or second session should be a walk. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you should have a backup outdoor session Yeah. where, I don't know, you can stretch mm. when you don't feel like going for a walk. Yeah, bro. Is that what you do? Yeah. Like the weekdays, I try to keep to the program. That the weekends, it's a little bit more free flowing. You know, I, I move depending on how I feel. Um, and I'll give you an example, last Friday I wasn't feeling too red hot. You know, I know I know I didn't want to go and and go hard or flog myself, so I went outside and just did um, my outdoor workout as a mobility workout. You know, forty five minutes. I picked a certain amount of, uh, of exercises, made sure I had a bit of a break in between, really focused on my intensity, my my intention, not intensity. Um, out of the workout and, and it, it helped. So your base is sorted. So you got that walk and then you can play with the intensity so you can go for a run. Go for you a run. You don't have to go run straight away and do seven runs in a row and then you're wrecked and you miss the eighth day. Yeah, bro. Whereas your base is a walk. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you're feeling good, you can run. Mm-hmm. If not, just walk. But yeah. your base is there. Yeah. And that's that's of, the most important thing, bro. Yep. Getting the base right and making sure you can actually do it first. You know, an outdoor Workout is a hard thing for a lot of people to do. If you can't get it done in Sydney, bro, like if or in Australia, then like you got to think about all these other other countries, bro, whether in the desert or you know the snow. That's hard. Like if you can't get it done in Australia, fuck. You see that guy lives out of his car doing something. Yeah, bro. Hard. Like that's what I mean. Like you know whatever predicament. That's interesting. Whatever pred- predicament you're in, you can you can get it done. And yeah, you just got to fine tune things. I think he showers at the gym. <laughs> Sick, eh, bro? And he's got his little cooker and he sleeps in the... He's cut out his uh, front seat of his car and he, um, yeah, cooks in the front seat of his little cooker, yeah. goes to the gym, shower. Yeah. He 
it's two sessions. <laughs> it's very like it's cool content, bro. Like I, it's that that interests me because you, I don't know. There's something about fine tuning seventy five hard that I really enjoy. And like I said to you, bro, this year of consistency, which I'm really trying to bang on. Um, like I, I really want to nail into it, and you know, my ideas just come off the back of it. You know, I, I don't know if you've watched that that guy that always does the ice baths every day. Yeah, making content like that would be cool too. Like you know, I think about seventy five hard, and I'm like, what's after seventy five hard? Phase one, which is the thirty days. And then I'm like, well, what could I do something in terms of content that'll be after? You know, like, imagine doing 100, you know, just finish 105 days. And then on the 106th day, I just do one day what I'm doing. So I'm just letting everyone know, you know, this is 106 days or 365 hard. And then 107. So it's just an idea in the back of my head that I'm rolling with as well. Yeah, but it's easy content as well if you're just sort of up to, especially the ice baths. It's very visual. Visual. Um, captivating. And then... Is that the one where they smash through the smash ice through the glass? Is yeah. he in the snow already? Yeah, there's the, a few of them around. Yeah, like he's already got that that backdrop. You know, it's it's like the way he does it. This content's really cool. Like he'll do a story on the way to th- the content, and then he'll put up like a quote or something or something that he's thought about over that night, and then he'll go and do the do the ice bath, break it, then he jumps into the ice bath, then he does um, with a voiceover. Does he do? Nah, voiceovers? oh no, I'm pretty sure he talks. Talks the whole time, and then he'll jump into the ice bath. Then he'll give the quote that he's put up on the story, and then after that, he'll do like a piece of food or something. He puts like a like a ice ice review. It's fucking cool, bro. Yeah. Then I was just thinking about that just for seventy five hard, bro. Like a bit of content for myself because as you know, volume is key for us. And if I can put up a piece of content every day like that, then that would be cool as well. So, so we'll go to a question. What yep. are some small steps to start integrating a new habit without disrupting your current routine? It's good. I still got this in the back of my head. Identifying, bro. You know, I think the biggest key from reading this Atomic Habits book, 10 pages every day, um, has been identifying what your habits are first. You know, we've already done the time slotting that we did last year. This year, it's been a little bit more different with time slotting connected to habits. So I'm seeing what I'm doing every day. I write down, you know, what time I wake up, I go on my way in. I go to and take my photo, my progress photo. So all those habits, I write them down, and then I look throughout my day, and I'm like, "Well, what's what are my what are the habits that are good? What are the habits that are bad? What do I need to implement?" That's that's how I've I've been doing them, and it's been working. I think you spoke about on Tuesday how you tag something on, yeah, to the habit. The, like so, it's, I call it st- stacking. So a perfect example is when I do my reading, so I don't forget now. Is I jump into the lounge room, I'll put on the TV, whether I'm watching YouTube, whatever, and I jump into Pancake and I will read ten pages. So I get two habits that I'm trying to create down pat, which is obviously the pancake every day, all close to the pancake, some mobility, and my reading as well, which is like a, a very forgetful things. And I want to make sure, you know, I get them done. Yeah, I think as your training knowledge develops, as a coach, you, it is a bit <coughs> unfair because some people don't know like what they're doing. Mm. And it's, you know, they got life to deal with exactly, but that two birds, one stone concept, I love that, like... I was doing boxing yesterday. I was doing my calf rehab, uh, machine weights, same, doing my rehab in, t- in between my rest periods. Yeah. Sometimes people just don't know that's available. Yeah. But sometimes just putting out content around those um, concepts because everyone's busy or they say they're busy and they're stuck with time. So that's just another method of trying to get a lot of work done in a small amount of time. Yeah, the integration's perfect, bro. Like, yeah, your example's mad because... I, I noticed that too for myself. I'm a, I'm a coach myself. You know, you finish your set and then you'll go and do your calf stuff. You know, that that is available for a lot of people. But I think where people get stuck too, bro, is keeping to someone else. Like, I understand keeping to someone else's program. Like, let's just say someone does my program and they've got 90 seconds rest written on there. Just because I've said 90 seconds rest doesn't mean you actually have to don't have to do anything. You can, you know, put something in there that's going to yep. help you in the long run. Um, and that being said too, uh, like back to the habit stacking, there was this really cool thing about this guy who wanted to lose weight, but he spent a lot of his time d- watching Netflix. So his habit stack or what he integrated together was jumping on a bike and he would only be able to watch Netflix if he spent time on the bike, which is a cool thing. Just yeah. to, and that can be another lesson for anyone as well. Yeah, and you can do your mobility while watching Netflix. I used to do my thirty minutes, <coughs> thirty minute a day squat while watching Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you can 
habit stack in that essence as well and get two things, two birds, one, one stone, stone training. It's yeah, the best. Man. It's the best, bro. <laughs> it's the best way to do things. You know, or supersetting yeah. um, with your gym mobility or gym rehab in between your rest periods. Do one stretch before. Mm. Sounds like our Uber Eats lunch. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, supersetting, two birds, one stone. Um, what else? Do one stretch before, one stretch after. after. Yeah, so yep. it's not so overwhelming. You say you want to do you break down your fifteen to twenty minute session. Yep. And then um get it done sort of like that as well. Yeah, man. Shot over eats. <laughs> Gotta feed the boys. <laughs> so we'll go next question. Um how important is flexibility in adjusting your routine to accommodate new habits? I think um having some plan B options. Yeah. Around that. Yeah. So um, it rains outside So do you have like a undercover area Where you can yeah. sit in your pancake And do a few yeah. stretches for the 45 minutes Of our yeah, 75 yeah. hard yeah, yeah. Um, You've had a shit day at work yep. You've had to stay an extra two hours past the time yep. Do you have a 20 minute session That you can do at home Or a 10 yep. minute session yep. 10 minutes of push ups yep. 1 to 10 yep. Back down um, Just yeah, having a plan B option yeah, perfect. Like I, I can give you experience, bro. I went to the airport, picked up um, someone from the airport the other day, and my morning, normal morning, would be a walk straight away, you know. But that got replaced with going to the airport. Now, normally back in the old day, that shit would have rattled me, bro, because it's just thrown off my whole morning. And as you know, we were both like getting our shit done by three pm. But it's just an adjustment. The same process happens at the afternoon time. You know, I'll go for my walk first, and then I'll go. But I'm very blessed. I still have obviously a, a job that a lot of people dream of. Um, but yeah, man, just being able to adjust on the fly, and you know, the flexibility of you know, I know I don't want to go for a walk in the afternoon. This is my perfect example. I didn't go for a walk in the afternoon, but because I just didn't want to walk, I just went outside and just literally did skipping and push ups, bro. And as soon as I got that that done, I had a rest for two hours and finished off my gym workout. Gym workout, and boom. To me, that's a sense of, of flexibility and not being able to just dial in and, and have to do what you need to do. I think it, people expecting uh, perfect conditions to yeah. work in, like your life's perfect, you um, go do your nine to five, you come home, everything's set, the kids are happy, <laughs> like all that, trying to figure out your routine in perfect conditions, you got to be able to adjust to when shit hits the fan type thing. You've got to test your capability. Like that's life. Like you can't yeah. um, just expect perfect conditions and say, oh, this happened, that happened, I couldn't get my training done. Like expect it. So that's why that plan B options come in as well. And sometimes you just got to grit, grit yeah, down and just get it done. That's it, bro. Like, like that, at the end of the day. Capabilities, man. Like we talk about this all the time. No one really tests their capabilities out. You know, there people say, I don't have time within my day to get stuff done. But like you haven't even tested that out yet, bro. Like, why can't you wake up early in the morning? Why can't you finish a little bit later than normal? What are you spending your time on, which is the biggest one I think a lot of people don't realise. And like we always say, you can check your phone to see how much screen time you spend, and a lot of that time that you spent there can be spent doing something that's going to be a little bit more worthwhile for you in the long run. Yeah, just having that, that standard, high standard, standard of living. fucking oath. And it's not that hard. <sighs> bro. And I always sort of challenge people's work capacity. Yeah, that's... Just like building your work capacity, meaning like, yes, you got your work and then you got your workout. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's going to be hard to start, but you're trying to make that your new normal. Yeah. At the start, it's not going to... It's going to feel like shit. Yeah. You're going to get tired. But eventually, it's just going to become your norm. Yeah. Which for us, we've sort of built that. So like, we know we're going to train, we're going to do our work. But sort of foreign to us was probably the content side where... Yeah, I agree, yeah, bro. that's our weakness. So we sort of apply the same concepts that we do to our training and to our content. content business and all that sort of stuff Yeah, as that's well. the focus for us this year, right? And it, Like, I'm blessed too, bro. Like, just like with training, I have the content side of things to you for, to, you know, for you to blaze the trail for me, which always makes things a lot easier, especially when it comes to something that's very new. Yep, 100. So last question... How do you adjust when a new habit isn't fitting into your routine as expected? Well, good question. We did yeah. get that question on Tuesday. So if it isn't fitting into the routine, if it's throwing shit off, fuck, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an eliminator, bro. Like, if something doesn't work, like, I just fucking remove it. And for, for example, bro, I'll give you the book. I'll give you the best example. 
I found myself after after I had every coffee in the morning. This is like over the last six months when I'm not doing 25 hard. I'd always have fucking cookies with them, bro. <laughs> now, when I did 75 hard and I started this year and I started reading that book, Atomic Habits, I'd fucking have my coffee and I'd look in the fucking jar straight away for the, for the um, cookie. Now, when I wrote that shit down, I was like, oh, yeah, coffee, biscuit. I've just wrote down everything, bro. And I looked at it and I looked down at myself. I'm like, fuck, I'm still fat. <laughs> so, bro, like that's one thing that I had to eliminate yeah. from my thing. And it wasn't helping the goal that I'm working towards, which is getting down to you know, fucking playing weight, bro. So removing that. And then I found myself looking at all the calories, extra calories that I had throughout a month. And I'm like, well, fuck, and that's why it's not working. So, yeah, it's easy for me, bro. Eliminate. Yeah, so eliminating the shit habits yeah, bro. before adding new habits. Yeah, exactly. Is that the thing? Yeah, bro. Um, yeah, I'm sort of, um, yeah, get rid of the things as well. It's more the, I find people, it's more um, the things that are wasting your time, get, yeah. getting rid of them, yeah, eliminating them first so mm. you can have the good habits that mm. will fit in properly and hopefully lead to a better life, yep. a better body, pain-free, bro- pain-free body and probably at your good body weight as well. Yeah, man, look, I'm a huge believer, you know, in the last couple of weeks, bro, in, in fine-tuning your habits so Life is low frequency. I mean low frequency as in there's not too much thought when it comes to the stuff that you know needs to get done. So when I go do my training, I know I just have to execute. I don't have to worry about my bag. I don't have to worry about my bottle. I don't have to worry about my towel. So all these habits that I'm trying to fucking fine tune to the point where I can just wake up in the morning and get my shit done. And for me, that's what freedom is, bro. Like I'm able to wake up in the morning and have a bit more peace of mind when I'm going to hang out with my family. I'm not worried about my fucking SD card and this, that, and the other like today, bro. So, yeah, man, it all it all coexists, and and the, and the better I can fine tune my own, you know, habits and and consistency this year, I think the more peace and freedom of mind I'll have. Keep it simple, have a plan, and then just fucking do the work. <laughs> Execute, bro. Shot. Shot, cousin. <laughs>